fellow crafters, and welcome to episode 24 of the Crochet Cakes podcast. This is a podcast about crocheting, sometimes knitting, sometimes sewing, you know, and sometimes what I'm reading. But it's mostly a crochet podcast. I am so happy that you could make it. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking out this podcast. If you're also a new viewer, you probably have no idea who I am. So, my name is Clarissa Beth. You can find me as Crochet Cakes on Ravelry, Instagram, and here on YouTube. You can also search on Ravelry for the Crochet Cakes podcast group and join our little community of crafters, which is growing every day. There are a lot of you people introducing yourselves, letting me know who you are, what you're working on, what your interests are. And I just think that's amazing because then it's just not a one-way conversation. You know, we're all actively participating and just getting to know one another. And I think that's amazing. Oh. I'm actually drinking uh, some tea on the podcast today because I haven't had my tea and I'm getting, getting very British in that aspect. If I don't have tea at least once a day, there's problems in my life and I feel like I'm less human. And it's not the caffeine because I usually drink either white tea, green tea or uh, just herbal teas, even though I love black tea. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But if I drink it every day, I get addicted to it. Yeah. And yes, so before we get into all of the crafty, gorgeous goodness, I do have a little, <laughs> a little, I do have a couple of administrative bits and pieces to be getting on with. So first and foremost, I would like to apologize if you are waiting for my podcast episode to pop up on your feed on Monday, two weeks ago, which was uh, my usual podcast routine because it's this is a bi-weekly podcast. Well, I uh, had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of issues with the internet. My podcast just wouldn't upload. I spent the better part of a week trying to upload my podcast and it just, it just wasn't cooperating. So this will feel like we see each other every week now because this will, um, I had actually recorded already two weeks ago on a Saturday, but the podcast episode came to you one week later. So yeah, you know, we work with what we got, right? But my issue with the internet was that I usually record, edit my podcast at home, but I go into work early on a Monday and I upload the episode from my job, which has super, super zoom, zoom internet. It's amazing. But uh, as previously mentioned, if you're a returning viewer and if you're a new viewer, I work for um, a federal grant program at the university of um, here in Puerto Rico, which um, where I'm from, if you didn't know, I'm from Puerto Rico. Anyway, <laughs> yes, so I work at a university, but the students have gone on strike protesting various um, budget cuts for the university, which um, if they're carried out the way they're expected to be carried out would mean that the university would shut down in 10 years time. So yeah, the students went on strike and the university has a zero confrontation policy. So I've kind of been working from home and while the internet at home allows me to watch podcasts, thank God, watch Netflix and you know, check my emails, interact with you guys on Instagram, it does not allow me to upload podcasts. But, uh, as I mentioned, I work for a federally granted program and we did gain access to our offices. So I'm back at work, which means you guys get a podcast in the expected time. Uh, today I'm recording on a Sunday. Today is Sunday, April 30th. So we're almost at the 1st of May, which I know is a holiday in um, some European countries. So enjoy that holiday, guys if you're from Europe. Um, but yeah, 
Also, I want to apologize for the lighting. It's a very, very, very gloomy, overcast, gray day here in Puerto Rico. No tropical sunrises, no tropical sunshine. It's just gloomy. And as such, I needed to turn on as many artificial lights as possible so you could actually see some of my face and not just like a gray area <laughs> talking to you, just a blob talking to you guys. And yeah, if you are new to the podcast, you probably won't notice, but if you've been with me for a while, I'm in a new setup, right? Well, a new old setup because I filmed my first two podcast episodes in this setup, but I, after that, started filming in my library. The problem, not the problem, but right now the library is undergoing some renovations and I just prefer to podcast from my room. But, you know, that brings about lighting issues. So we'll see how this goes. If it's too terrible, I will just go back to my usual library space. And so that just brings up to something really, really, really exciting. I am so excited to share this with you guys and I hope you find it exciting as well. Oh, let me drink my tea before it dies. Oh. Right, well. So, in the previous podcast episode, Claudia from the Crochet Luna podcast, hi Claudia, uh, which is a crochet podcast that you should check out. It's new and it's amazing. All right. <laughs> so, uh, after watching the previous uh, episode, which is called Outlandish Turmoil, Claudia got in touch with me via Ravelry. She private messaged me and she was... Uh, chatting about how we both have interest in romance novels and, re and she recommended some, she asked about some I had read and she came up with a brilliant, brilliant idea to create a cowl based on our mutual interest of romance novels. Now if you don't like romance novels, don't panic, don't skip ahead, let me explain what this cowl is going to be about. So, one thing, we're calling it the Summer of Love Cal. Why are we calling it the Summer of Love Cal, Clarissa? You might want to mention why. Well, the why of it is because this cal is meant to celebrate our favorite couples from either romance novels, uh, books, classic literature, movies, films, series, wherever your favorite couple comes from. This is a cow meant to honor them. And how do we do that? By choosing colors that represent your couple, by crocheting or knitting um, patterns that remind you of your couple. It's kind of a free thing, free thing, guys. The only thing you have to do is make sure you're representing a couple. And when you enter your finished object, you do have to state where your couple comes from, where your favorite couple comes from. So, for example, um, I know Outlander is a big thing right now and season three is about to start. So if your favorite uh, couple is Jamie and Claire, then, you know, choose colors or choose a pattern that represents both Jamie and Claire. And when you finish the object and you enter it in the finished object thread, write uh, where your couple inspiration came from. Um, just to give you guys an idea, um, as previously mentioned, I really like Jamie and Claire uh, from Outlander, but I think my favorite couple has to be Evie and Rick O'Connell. That, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure Evie and Rick O'Connell is my favorite couple. You know how some people, uh, some girls or some people, when they were young, they wanted um, to find Prince Charming. I wanted to find my Rick O'Connell. <laughs> that was me, guys. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> So yeah, um, one other couple that I really like, which is not actually a real couple, they're real characters, but they never got together in the books, are uh, Draco and Hermione. Give me a second. Draco and Hermione. 
I love these hooks. Um, I don't actually use them a lot because I find them a bit uncomfortable. I would have preferred if the ergonomic part reached this point here, then it would have been perfect. But I love staring at them together. So Hermione is size H for Hermione. And I didn't really need a D for Draco, so I just chose an I. But I love the colors. I love them. These were made by Angie. I'll put the information as always in the Ravelry show notes and I'll put the information down here so you guys know where I got these little guys from. She's not doing custom orders anymore, that much I know, but she does uh, shipped to order. So she will create a bunch of hooks and then she'll put them in the shop, her Etsy shop, and you go buy the ones you want and boop. So yeah. When does the cow start? That's important information, Claire Smith. You're forgetting important information here. So, the cow starts on the 3rd of June. I'm pre-announcing it right now in the beginning of May, so you guys get to choose your couple, your yarns, your patterns, you know, get all set up for the cow that starts the 3rd of June. And this cow is amazing, not just because I'm co-hosting it with Claudia, but also because in June, I will be celebrating my one year pot potiversary. Yeah, one year potiversary because can you believe it guys? It's been almost a year since I uploaded my first episode on YouTube. <sighs> right, let's not get emotional. So yeah, it'll run from the 3rd of June to the 5th of August. Plenty of time to enter the objects into the finished object threads and to crochet or knit whatever you want as long as it represents your favorite couple. And of course you can feel free to enter more than one object. It's it's not limited. As long as it represents a couple, you can enter it. So without further ado, let's move on to some crafty crochet goodness because I'm assuming that's what most of you are here for. Hmm. Now, we're gonna start this week off with finished objects because I do have some finished objects to share with you guys. The first one is something you will not have seen before. It wasn't even on my hook or planned, but it's this. It's my Ravenclaw pillow and it's a granny, just a solid granny square that I've alternated between using the kind of bronze color that is totally not showing up it's showing up green, but it's bronze, and this royal blue. So what I did was just, I did a solid granny square, and then I did two rows of this bronze, which is Cloudborn Fibers in their Pima Cotton. It's 100% Pima Cotton, and it's DK weight. And then I followed it with the royal blue, which is Lion Brand 24-7, 100% mercerized cotton. And I did two rows of the royal blue, then I went back to the DK and I did two rows, went back, and I'm really glad I didn't choose two worsted weight fibers because I find that uh, the Pima cotton being a DK weight and I was crocheting it with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook it made it a bit stretchier, so it allowed me to really stretch the the worsted weight to actually join it. And then I just did a single crochet join all along the border. This time I did the single crochet join on the outside, so it forms a ridge that I really like, as opposed to um, my first pillow, which I did the single crochet join on the inside. And then when I closed it, I had to do the single crochet join on the outside after I stuffed the pillow in it. So this time I was just like, let's just do it all on the outside. And it came out pretty cool. I'm very, very happy with this. This will be a birthday present for my dad. His birthday is on May 4th. May the 4th be with you. So. I chose these colors because it kind of represented um, Ravenclaw and also they also remind me of Star Wars. So yay for solid granny square pillow. And on the inside, it just has a store-bought pillow. I didn't uh, do anything amazing to that. 
But I will say I played yarn chicken with this pillow. I almost ran out of the um, bronze color. <laughs> and I definitely didn't have enough of the blue to do the join. So I used 100 grams of DK and 100 grams of worsted. I used everything. So it's a good scrap busting project, I guess. Um, perfect pillow. I'm not sure about the size. I didn't actually measure it. I just went with it. So I guess I was lucky I didn't run out of yarn way before that. But the other finished object that I have to show you is something you will have seen me working on before. And it is this, my cherry heart skirt. Now, this skirt uh, was inspired by Sandra's from the Cherry Heart podcast, um, granny skirt that she did, which is amazing. And I'm over the moon with that skirt. And it inspired this one. Um, I don't have the gift of pattern designing that Sandra does, so I wasn't really sure how to go about making the skirt. So I used a free pattern on, um, which is found online. It's in the, the pattern is drops 115-43, very creative, but it's a free pattern and I followed it for the main body of the skirt. Here I used three, um, I used three hanks or skeins of the Cloudborn 100% um, Pima cotton and it's a DK weight as I mentioned and this color is slate. Now uh, things that I did change in this skirt, the granny squares are smaller and I made solid granny squares and these are in the Enchanted Forest colorway which is dyed by Made by Black Elephant and they're fingering weight 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. Now I had basically just had a mini skein of this colorway because that's all she was dyeing up originally but she decided to dye some full skeins of the Enchanted Forest colorway and oops, sorry about that I've got it here now this is all caked up and this is everything that's left because I essentially only needed 30 grams for the size squares that I did so this is the front of the skirt and the back you will see the different dye lots because the mini skeins which are up here barely have any white in them and they're full of just uh, a beautiful beautiful bright colors but the full skein has more white in it I don't know if that's showing up I don't think it's actually showing up they have more white in it and the colors aren't as vibrant as in the mini skein and I only needed to do one row with this. So I've got all of it left over, which is good. Maybe I'll make a pair of socks out of it or something. But things I would like to change, I would have liked to actually have crocheted less of the slate color and done a third row of granny squares, which would have been up here because I really, really like the combination of the bright colors and the slate. And I would have liked to have more of the bright colors because I'm more of a bright colored person. All right, so things I had to change from the pattern. I did the extra small, which uh, when the way it's suggested in the pattern, you will wind up with 176 stitches at the bottom. At least I did because of the way I wanted to join my squares. All right, uh, and you're supposed to uh, make a crochet a button flap and close your skirt with buttons. Now this is a very, very heavy weight uh, skirt. It would have fallen off if I would have just closed it with buttons and I wouldn't have actually been able to wear it. It might have started out okay, but then at the end of the day, yeah, it wouldn't have looked so great. So also, as I said, I made the main body of the skirt way too long for my liking. The skirt would have been below my knees and I'm not a big fan of that look. So, what I did was that, uh, actually it was mom's suggestion to make a waistband 
So just fold some of the fabric over to make a waistband and insert an elastic. So that is what happened here. An elastic was inserted and I'm very, very happy. Essentially, it is finished, except, you know, I have to weave in all those disastrous ends, which feels never ending. Now, the third finished object that I have to share with you is actually what I'm wearing. <laughs> so what I'm wearing, I'll just quickly pop up to show you, but I'll insert some little footage of the skirt so you can see it better, is my finished Clemence skirt. Do, 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 do. Just do a little twirl for you guys. Yeah, I finished it last week. No, the week before last. I finished it the week before last and uh, a couple little things here and there. Um, I don't know if this is gonna be awkward again. Uh, my hem is a lot um, bigger than what it called for in the Clemence skirt, which is a basically draft it yourself pattern in the Tilly and the Buttons book. And, but I'm very happy overall with the finished thing, um, object. Mom finished hemming it for me because I wasn't pleased with the length. So she measured it and she hemmed it by hand because she prefers to hem by hand. It does give it a neater finish, but I'm lazy. I hem with the machine anyway. Uh, the waistband is a wee bit roomy, but it's actually good because if I sit down, it doesn't <sighs> cinch me. So that's good. And yeah, it's a draft it yourself pattern, but it does come with the book that you buy from Tilly and the Buttons. So I won't go into more detail from it, but the fabric is Cat Lady, I believe it's called. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is actually it for finished objects. It's time to show you what I'm hooked on. Yeah, yeah. It's all about crochet. All about crochet. No trouble. Okay. Yeah. Let's not sing on the podcast again. <laughs> so I'm actually working on something that wasn't even cast on when I recorded the previous podcast. Do you say cast on in crochet? I'm not sure, but I do like the term. So cast on. And it is my Hotel of Bees shawl. This is the edge that you start decreasing. Right, sorry about that. My phone is being very rude today. And yeah, this is the second time it's caught me off. The first time, second time it's caught me off. So let's get back to what we were talking about. We were chatting on about this lovely piece of crochet. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen some progress on this Hotel of Bees shawl. And if you're new, then let me enlighten you to what the Hotel of Bees shawl is. It's a crochet pattern desi designed by Christina Mm, I don't actually recall her last name, but I will put her details as always in, in here somewhere and in the show notes. So Christina designed this amazing, amazing uh, pattern based on the Hotel of Bees from the book All the Light We Cannot See, I believe it's called, which I need to get and read because she does offer a brief description on what inspired her to make this pattern. This is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And if you follow either Sandra from Cherry Heart or Sam from the Betsy Makes podcast, they have both offered a coupon code that Christina has kindly donated, I think you would say, to uh, those people participating in the Hotel of Bees Cal, which is a crochet along specifically for this shawl being hosted by Sandra and Sam from Betsy Makes. Now, um, you can see some finished objects because some people have already finished theirs. If you uh, go on Instagram and search for the hashtag H-O-B-C-A-L, hashtag Hobcal, 
and yes the pattern is as i said paid for but it is well worth the money it it has 21 pages and those 21 pages offer some description of what inspired her to make the pattern um materials charts tips and tricks there's a row count for every row which is amazingly helpful if like me you fudged up somewhere along and you've had to faff about with it to actually get the correct stitch count um it's written for a sport weight yarn but i am using fingering weight and christina in the pattern she tells you that she crochets very loosely so for sport weight she used a three millimeter crochet hook now i used a five millimeter crochet hook for this and i didn't even get the gauge she specified but i thought it was close enough and besides i thought the stitches looked very loose and airy so i didn't want to go up any higher in fact half of me wishes i would have just stopped at um 4.25 size g or a 4.5 millimeter instead of a five because open stitches like this drive me a bit crazy but you can see how just gorgeous it's looking i'm using different a uh, different yarn weight and different fibers in my shawl as well. Um, the one I'm working with right now, which is this color here, and you can, it's a, the color is between the gold. This is the Prongs colorway, which is a colorway dyed up by Kayleen from the Little Bean Crochet podcast and Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarns. It's Prongs, the Marauder, you know, James Potter, Harry's father. And um, it's in her everyday sock base, which is 7525 75, Super Wash Merino Nylon. And the gold I'm using is um, the gold color. This is 100% mulberry silk from the Skeen Queen. I think I've actually lost, no, I have not. Here's the bowl band. It's called, the colorway is Luminosity from the Skeen Queen. It's 100% mulberry silk, four ply fingering, 400 meters, 100 grams. So I'm working on that. And it's, you know what's funny? The silk, you know, merino usually feels buttery and soft. But the 100% silk just feels like you're being caressed by the softest, softest material imaginable. So I occasionally have to stop working on this shawl because when I get, after finishing this huge section in the mulberry silk and then getting to the section where I'm using a uh, superwash merino, it feels ridiculously rough on my hands and it's not that this yarn isn't soft it's amazingly soft it's merino but when you compare it to the silk it feels coarse it's actually i'm finding it really funny that i have to stop crocheting on it because of the different yarn fibers i'm um, fibers i'm using but i really love this pattern one thing i will say though is that i feel that I really, really have to pay attention to the pattern. It's not something, you know, like potato chip crochet that I can do while watching a series or watching a podcast. I feel that I have to devote my full concentration to that pattern. Not because it's difficult to understand, but because I want to make sure by the end of it, I have the right stitch count. I feel that um, for this pattern, more so than for any other pattern I have made, it's really important that you get the correct stitch count. So yeah, I'm loving that shawl. I'm loving that it's in my B bag. It's just, ugh, I love this bag. I love it. I love it. And for those of you that were wondering about the fabric, where I got it from and whatnot, I've um, actually been using my crafting journal and this is the information right there. I made it with, I think I mentioned it before, but I'll just quickly mention it again. I made it with hard interfacing 
and it's got bees on the inside and the beehive on the outside because bees live inside the beehive, right? And I just put a little ribbon on it as the handle and I love, 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 love love this bag. Every time I look at it, it makes me ridiculously happy. And every time I pick up the project, it makes me very happy as well. It's slightly frustrated because, like I said, it's something that I feel I have to zen in to actually be successful at. Not that that's the pattern's fault, that's just me, that I'm really worried about my stitch count. And guys, that really is it about everything I've been crafting because I finished almost everything that was on my hook. Uh, the perky peplum top, I have not abandoned it. It's just I've been putting it on a bit of time out because I'm waiting for, well, I guess tomorrow, Monday, uh, May 1st, is when the newest cowl hosted by Opera Joe starts and it's a summer garment cowl. So whips are welcome so I can enter my perky peplum top because it's a garment and I'm crocheting it with fingering weight linen. Summer. Um, but that is it for the crafty crocheting segments of the podcast. But I do have something very exciting to share with you and that is snail mail because I received a couple of items in the post. Some of them that I ordered myself, so those would be acquisitions, more to the end, and one which I knew was making its way towards me, but I wasn't expecting everything I got. So the mug I drank tea from came with this package. I don't actually have it with me right now because I went and washed it. I don't like the tea stains to get settled in, and it's a white mug. But um, Faye from the Crochet Circle podcast had gotten in touch with me a couple of weeks ago asking for my address and saying that she had a couple of items that she would like to send my way. And that is very generous because I live in Puerto Rico, which is, we have United States Postal Service. So, you know, when you mail it, it costs the same as to send it to the United States. That's what I'm trying to say. But still, it's very generous. UK to the United States very long way. So um, she sent, she had originally said she was going to send some mini skeins that she thought I would really like for my um, crochet blanket, which it's not that it's abandoned, it's just that it's gotten too hot to have a 100% wool blanket on my lap. So she sent uh, something that's really Slytherin and I love it because it represents Draco Malfoy a bit. First thing she sent was this mini skein. And this is a mini skein from Monty and the Squid. I've never used her yarn before, so that's amazing. And she also sent a little crochet stitch marker or progress keeper. It's a bunny. It's so cute. And she also sent this, which I'm pretty sure is 100% wool and it's just amazing. Oh, and it smells glorious. I love it. All these greens will be going. She also sent some fiber for either spinning or felting. I'm very interested in spinning, but it's not something I've done. So mom saw it and she's like, ooh. I'm like, so mom will be felting with this gorgeous fiber at some point in the future. It smells wonderful as well. And it's so, so soft. I, I feel like I could just put it like this, make it into a pillow and cuddle with it. That's what I feel like. Um, she also sent a pair of stitch markers for me and for my mom. She also sent a mug for mom, which is very, very kind of her. So I'm gonna pull out the stitch markers so you can see them. Um, I'm pretty sure they're clay stitch markers. So we've got a little lamby, and we've got a little I love this one, I love the paw print. So these are crochet and knitting stitch markers. There's a vari var variety here. A little bee. And hi. <laughs> I love that one. And a heart. And 
I believe this is a bear. Yeah, so that beautiful assorted collection of stitch markers. And she also sent something that um, she debuted at the Fiber Festival she recently went through. Oh my god, this is such an amazing little bag. I don't know if I want to keep it as a sock bag or a notions pouch. It's a drawstring. So, but I just, I just love that it says crochet is my jam. It's so amazing. And just thank you so much, Faye. You didn't have to do any of that. Oh, and it was just so wonderful. And I love my mug, my sheet mug. It's officially become my new tea mug. And that was some happy mail that I got. And uh, some of the other stuff I bought for myself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just um, pull this out. Mm -hmm. I'll just quickly show you because, well, Kayleen did something. She put the Marauders in Simple DK all together. So I bought the Marauders set. This is Wormtail, Mooney, Padfoot, and Prongs. And Kayleen, I just want to point out one tiny little thing. It's supposed to be Mrs. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs. So Mooney had to be over there. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Kayleen. I'm just kidding. Right, and then um, I had purchased this a while ago, but I was waiting for my sister to ship it to me because I shipped it to my sister. This is my first ever Lolo Did It skein, and it's in the Polyjuice Potion colorway. And the reason I bought this was... Uh, not because it really reminds me of Polyjuice Potion, except this part here really does remind me of Polyjuice Potion. It's because I really wanted to try this base, and this is her plush sock base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon, and 10% Tencel. And it really is very squishy and soft. This will obviously be a pair of socks at some point. Now, um, I had bought some yarn to make contrasting heels and cuffs. This is uh, Valley Yarns in their Huntington, which is a sock base. Now, I don't know if I didn't read correctly or it wasn't specified in the details, but I thought this was just 75% wool, 25% nylon, kind of like when you buy a regia or when you buy uh, opal. Let's pause for the dog. Right, sorry about that. It's just, I swear my dog's a broken record. Once he starts barking, there is no stopping him. But anyway, I was discussing yarn, not dogs. So I thought it was 75% wool, 25% nylon, but it turns out it's 75% super wash merino and 25% nylon. Wah, wah, wah. Because I really wanted a stronger blend for my heels. You know, I didn't want something so squishy and soft, which I don't know, maybe I'll make a pair of socks out of them together. Pausing again. Right, so in addition to that, my sister had asked if I could make her another pair of socks because her socks that I made for her birthday, they had a, um, I think she broke the heel at the bottom. She uses them to walk around the house in. She doesn't really wear them inside shoes or anything like that. So I told her to take a picture of the hole and maybe she could send them to me and I could fix the hole. But I didn't find the yarn I had used, so I just went and bought something special. Well, special because I have never knit with this and it is Regia. Yeah, um, I don't remember the color, but this is kind of the way it's supposed to knit up. I think it was Mood, the name of the kind of like set that they came in. It's mood color. And this is Regia and it was on sale on yarn.com. So it's 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide 
and I am dying to just get these on. They feel really squishy and I think they will make wonderful, wonderful socks. And I have heard so many great things about both Regia and Opal that I'm dying to just dig into this scheme. Uh, something else that I bought which I absolutely loved that is yarn related is this. I couldn't resist this. I don't I feel like this is becoming a show and tell about look what I bought but it's just I like to buy crafty things that look like works of art that's just I, I like to do that so this little house is by Deborah Raymond who is indigo chicken on Etsy so you can do indigo chicken .com. And you can find her shop. These are little notions pouches that look like houses and I just love them. Look that's the inside. They're very very well made. All her stitches and corners matchy match and inside I've just got a pair of scissors, pen, uh, measuring tape and a little notebook. But I love this. I'm not a big fan of the pink but I love the green and they just look like little houses and I saw this in the yarn hoarder podcast and I just uh, I had to buy it so in terms of yarn I received something else uh, when my parents were away and it's this mom brought me back some yarn from Argentina um, we're not sure if it's wool or acrylic or what type of fiber it is because it comes in this uh, little hank, so we think it's wool, but we don't know enough about, and it doesn't smell like acrylic, but it also doesn't smell like wool. I don't know, but I love the color. And it's, uh, she got me two skeins of this, but I have no more information to offer on these guys because there wasn't a tag. So, yeah. Those are yarny bits and bobs and um, things I've bought. <laughs> I really should stop buying yarn, but it's too beautiful. So I've just bought yarns for projects, except for the um, Marauders. I just bought them because they're the Marauders and I needed to have the whole collection in fingering weight and in DK weight because that's what you do when you're a big Harry Potter fan, I guess. Um, in terms of crafting, that's uh, all I have to share with you this week, but um, I wanted to do a little something different, so I'm going to chat a bit about, um, I don't know, um, what's been going on in my life, what have I also been working on. So, um, as previously mentioned, the university is on strike. So what that means for us employees is that um, up to a point you get to log in saying you're willing to work and you would be working and sometimes you work from home but you can't really get into your office. Uh, if the strike goes on for much longer, we uh, will be subtracted our vacation days and once that is subtracted we may or may not get paid. Uh, if you're um, hired with a contract, you know, you're not a permanent employee, you are not getting paid um, because you're paid by what you work and since you're not actually working, then you're not getting paid. And that's just the situation we're in right now. The situation in Puerto Rico is, is not the best right now and I don't want to get into it too much. Um, but I'm just bringing all of this up to say that I'm really grateful for the crafting community and the space it provides to just share an aspect of my life that is really keeping me sane right now because not only do I work in the university but I work under a federally granted program and with uh in terms of the budget that the you know congress and the president are working on it's it's looking pretty grim for the for federally granted programs and i know pell grants will be 
affected very very greatly affected so it just it just seems to be like a very very grim grim future and part of me is wondering well should I just chuck it all up and go move to some remote part of Scotland where I can just live like a hermit and do something awesome like raise sheep and you know make my own yard <laughs> so part of me is just wondering that and the other part like I said is just really grateful that you guys are providing you know the space whether you know it or not you're providing a huge comfort um, in times like these so it's just um, I'm really happy to have you guys join uh, my little corner of YouTube to have you join the Ravelry group it fills my heart with joy seeing what you guys are up to and just you know just just thank you for for being there and for participating in in my little crafty ventures so thank you guys and happy crafting bye uh don't leave yet because me and my scatterbrain forgot to announce two very important things number one i will be recording a mother's day special with my mom this coming week so you will in fact get kind of a weekly podcast and we wanted to record it before Mother's Day because we thought we'd give you some ideas of last minute last minute gifts you can crochet up for your loved ones. And the other bit of news is that starting in May, I'm not sure of the exact date yet, but sometime in May, Faye from the Crochet Circle podcast will be hosting her International Crochet Night. And we had talked, Faye and I, about Saturday being a good time around um, 3 o'clock United States time, I believe. That is when we would just go to Google Hangouts, sign in, and get to chat with other people from around the world. So this is these things are something that interests you, then um, please stay tuned and just watch this space for more information. Bye!